Hey guys, you're on the Game Snook channel. Here who talks to you is Andre. Welcome to another video here on the channel. Well, today's video is a big one. I'll be showing you seven deaths there that are kind of secret that you may know one or the other, but I'm sure you don't know all about GTA V. So without further ado, leave that like right at the beginning of the video and let's get started. Guys, the first one here is from a mission of weirdos and crazy. I don't know if you are remembered, but remember Nigel and the old lady who idolizes celebrities? In one of the missions, they ask you to come and get the tooth, the golden tooth of Willie, from the Love Feast band. So far, so good, right? You can either kill him or just beat him up so you can get the tooth. But that's not the point. Why is this death so important? Love Feast? No. William Mektovich is the bassist of the Love Feast band in the GTA series, and he comes from GTA Vice City, right? He was already in GTA Vice City, in addition to several Easter eggs in other GTAs, including GTA 5. So that's why I thought it was important to bring this here to you, because suddenly you ended up killing this character, but you had no idea who he was actually. He is Willie from the Love Feast band. He is the bassist of the Scottish band. This one here, guys, I'm almost sure you didn't know it was this guy, right? So let's go to the next one, which is also cool. The next one here, guys, is the following. You know that after the aggravating mission where we select Michael for the first time, we can screw up on Simeon, right? Franklin comes in, destroys Simeon's concessionaire, and well, right? It happens so far so good. But after the friendship request mission, which is that mission where we kill Jay Norris for Lester and such, for us to raise money, to pay for Martin Madrasso and everything, we can access the concessionaire again. And this time we can kill Simeon. When you get there, there's a gang of Armenians, so you're good, you have to get armed, and you have to go through one door and leave through the other. Very curious guys, the following, you can't shoot him. It's straight at Simeon, you can aim there and try to shoot him, you can't. So if you want to kill him with weapons, you have to go with RPG or something. So you can aim close to him, explode him, you know? And leave Simeon dead, because the game itself doesn't help you kill Simeon. Or, or you can do like I'm doing here with Franklin. You can get him and run over him or something. Curious guys, very curious, the following right after the aggravating mission, right? I don't remember, I think it's right after the aggravating mission. Simeon makes a call to Franklin, where he eats Franklin's tail. Franklin says a lot of things, and if you've already killed Simeon, this call will happen in the same way. I don't know if it's a game error, or if it's because Simeon's death is actually an error. It shouldn't be a real death, or if it's not a canonical death. There's a lot of that in the GTA universe. There are characters that you kill, but actually like, according to the original story, they are not dead. Anyway, right? But I think you got the idea. The third one here, guys, is the character, Agent Ulp. We also know him in GTA Online, or also him as Bernard, right? He's a character from GTA IV, okay? I don't have his image here in GTA IV, but he was a character from GTA 4 who even blackmailed Nico Bellic to do some missions for him, right? Well, during the mission, the ending, if you put it to repeat the mission, you'll see it happens that the character, this Agent Ulp, is in the middle of a shooting, and you can kill him, like normally he's there in the right corner. I'll kill him so you can see, right? But I believe his death is not a canonical death, like it's not a real death. You can end up killing him here or leave him alive, I don't know. The mission won't fail if you leave him alive. And looking at that news site, I haven't seen any difference. This image I'm showing is his in GTA Online during missions. And then I got a little confused, right guys? Is his death canonical if it's not? Anyway, or if his death is canonical and that part of GTA Online happens before that? Well, I don't know. That's it, starting here for the fourth, guys. The fourth here is the following. During the safari at the break, this one I found it pretty cool, guys. During the safari at the break, which is that mission where the staff tries to tap the Lamar and we go out on a shootout, has to start killing a lot of bullets and such and run away there. Anyway, I think you already know what mission I'm talking about. Well, in this mission, we invade the MC Clip Clip section. And so far, all right, what's the tape, guys? You can choose to kill the MC Clip or not. Every time I played, I didn't kill him. But after taking a look on the internet, I saw that the right thing is to kill him because when you kill him, this message appears there when you go on the game's internet. There will be a news that is very common after some certain events in the game when it's written there. MC Clip dies after, after some gangsters and a shootout interrupted a photo session and shoot the clip before stealing your jet skis and some other things like that. I don't speak Spanish very well, but I think it was possible for you to understand. Well, so yes, the death of MC Clip is a kind of secret death, and that should happen within the game. And most people didn't know, like me, that I never killed him. I always let it roll. Normal starting here for the fifth death, guys, that can happen within the game. This one is if you want, okay? But the game doesn't punish you if you do. It's the one from the pack Mercury. This pack is from GTA 4. He was a very close contact with Nico Bellic. Actually, not a contact. He was a friend of Nico Bellic. 
He helped on the missions and everything else, and he is also available for coups in GTA V. You find him in a random event within the game where he is stealing a market with a guy called Pangare. Follow his image in GTA 4. Just for you to know, go there. It's kind of forgotten. Anyway, well, and then you have the option to help him and unlock him as a member of the coup, or you can shoot him in the face. And the character, the guy from the supermarket, will end up thanking you. The location for you to find this random event is this one that I showed you on the map. So if you want to go there and check it out, find the pack too. And you can also get part of the money from the pack. But I already say that it pays off a lot more to save him, because besides you make him available for coups when you kill him, you will only be able to steal about $300 and if you save him, he will give you more or less $1000. So as always, the ideal is to save the pack and not kill him. Even if you have Trevor, you can get him if you want and take him to the altruistic cult that he will not notice. Starting here, I think it's the sixth, guys. This one, I'm sure most people killed him because I was already angry with this psychiatrist, psychologist, I don't know. But killing him for me is the right death, right? It's the canonical part of the game that you have to do because the game gives you a real reason for that. And I understood after killing him what it would be. It's the following. When you go to the last session, right? After you reset the game, do option C. If you go to a psychologist, he will run away and you have the option to kill him or not. Why is it ideal for you to kill him? If you don't kill, no news will appear. But guys, if you come here and kill him, a news will appear there, which makes me think that yes, it's the canonical death, right? It's the right death to be done because there was already a news ready for that, right? It's not like you didn't kill him and even so, something different happened. Anyway, I think it gave you the idea. But why do you have to kill him, guys? When you kill, you will be able to understand better. But in short, it's written like this. Dr. Isaiah Fredlander, radio announcer and recent author, was killed yesterday in a murder that the police call suspicious. Dr. Fredlander, who recently gained a lot of fame thanks to his bestseller about his relationship with a scary sociopath and alleged that he was apparently a retired bank thief whose fake name is Mark DeSantos. Look at the ideas. No one has identified the real Mr. DeSantos yet. People are uncertain if he is alive. Just last week, Dr. Fredlander spoke in public about the futility of trying to work with criminals. In other words, Dr. Fredlander was gaining fame over Michael's stories. And if he got very famous and rich, he could end up exposing who Michael really was. Because he was already doing that with books. I imagine he wouldn't do it to be able to have more fame, more success, more things. And then you end up leaving Michael exposed, right? So the right thing is to kill Dr. Fredlander. Now the last secret death, guys, that exists here in the game is Ashley Butler's. For those who don't remember who Ashley Butler is, it's that girl Trevor is getting at the beginning of the game. Also Ashley, who is Johnny Clapp's girlfriend. And why do I say it's a secret death? The game basically doesn't let you kill her naturally. If you try to shoot her, you can't. But if you throw a bomb or run over her, it will be worth it, okay? Anyway, but if you decide to leave her alive, she will die anyway. And that would be the secret death that happens to her. I'm going to show you a little bit of that. When you kill her, an article comes out in Sonora Beach that says the following. Four men and a woman die after a sex and drug orgy in a condominium in Palito Bay, which seems to have gone very wrong thanks to a bad lot of heroin. The police responded to the neighbors' reports of an unpleasant smell. They broke down the apartment doors to find five nude corpses, apparently involved in a sexual game, which unfortunately also involved injecting a dishonest kiss. The only woman was identified as Ashley Butler. 37 years old from Alderney. The four men were identified as Lars Mitchell, 53 years old, Tommy Tammins, 59, Jude Mellons, 58, and Eric Armstrong, sit 85 years old. They were all local men with long history of drugs and legal problems. That is, her husband died, Johnny Kleps. The guy died there for fighting for her and everything. What does she do to solve the thing? She's going to do a lot of old people until she dies of heroin overdose. Ashley, it's not easy for anyone. Ashley is really awesome, okay? Well guys, that was today's video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, don't forget to leave that like. And subscribe to the channel because it helps us a lot, okay? See you in the next video. A hug and bye.